Thank you. Thank you very much first to the Middle East uh, Institute uh, for organizing this event. Uh, and uh, if I may, just also remember that uh, we are here as part of uh, a research project which is um, uh, co-sponsored, um, which is sponsored by uh, the European Commission and which is co-organized by the Middle East Institute and by the Institut pour la Recherche Stratégique in Paris. Uh, uh, looking at uh, improving transatlantic cooperation in protracted refugee crisis uh, with three case studies, Sudan, uh, Afghanistan, and uh, Iraq. We don't have our Sudan colleague today, but... Uh, and uh, it's, it's been interesting to go uh, to, to, to take this comparative approach to uh, really try to probe uh, what, uh, you know, is common, what is different in these uh, three... Uh, uh, demographically uh, important uh, um, displacement crisis. One thing that strikes me uh, is that, um, uh, be it for Afghanistan, Sudan, or Iraq, uh, displacement is not a recent phenomenon, uh, and uh, it's something that uh, you know comes out in analysis of. Uh, major displacement crisis uh, in developing country. It's that usually uh, uh, displacement feeds displacement and uh, uh, very often you have uh, extremely long-term displacement crisis uh, which only some waves of it attract international attention. This is very much the case in the Iraq uh, situation uh, where focus has been on the post-2003 uh, displacement and even more particularly post-2006, uh, i.e. the time when sectarian violence uh, was started being at its height in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Iraq and, and created widespread uh, displacement. But what, one thing to remember, and which I think is absolutely crucial uh, when one tries to think about durable solutions um, about the Iraqi displacement crisis is that um, uh, displacement, uh, eviction, um, uh, expulsion, uh, population, population exchanges uh, are endemic uh, in the modern history of Iraq. And uh, they've been used as tool of governance uh, almost since the creation of the modern state of Iraq uh, with uh, um, an acceleration under the Basist regime and with a new, uh, uh, um, with a new um, uh, upsurge uh, after 2006 where it was not the state anymore who was responsible for uh, uh, displacing people. It was mostly non-state actors. But this, this practice of uh, eviction and displacement is extremely deeply ingrained in Iraqi society. And it's also deeply ingrained in the mentalities uh, of people, including those uh, in power today. Uh, if you look at the profile and at the personal histories of people in government in Iraq today, almost all of them have experienced displacement uh, uh, in large part to Iran, uh, but also to uh, Syria and uh, to a number of Western countries, including uh, the states. I mean, they're, they're, they're former uh, political uh, exiles and refugees. So um, this is important to remind this, um, because I don't think any uh, technical uh, humanitarian solution to the issue of displacement can be uh, uh, effective. There needs to be uh, really... Um, uh, a national debate and reflection uh, in countries like uh, Iraq and probably like Afghanistan uh, on uh, what has been uh, the, the, uh, the effect of uh, decades of displacement on the social fabric and on political processes uh, uh, before you know, humanitarian action uh, can be effective. So to go back to the most recent um, uh, trends of displacement uh, in Iraq, uh, there has been much focus uh, of the international <coughs> humanitarian actors and of donors uh, at the forefront of the U.S. and also of uh, advocacy, human rights advocacy NGOs or refugee NGOs on precisely on those uh, who have crossed the border uh, from Iraq into neighboring countries, i.e. refugees. Uh, the, the countries that have received the largest number of Iraqi refugees being Syria, followed by Jordan, and then Lebanon, Egypt, uh, and to a lesser extent, uh, a number of other countries like Turkey. Other countries have been totally forgotten. Yemen also has received uh, uh, Iraqis. And now, um, 
this um, I would say almost exclusive focus on refugees has been uh, detrimental uh, to uh, the fate of the internally displaced uh, who uh, uh, about whom there are uh, several indications that they are mu much more vulnerable uh, uh, in their, uh, uh, I mean, there's a much larger uh, group of them which are extremely vulnerable and who have become um, also uh, urban poor today living in slums, informal settlements, but also in public buildings from which they risk uh, eviction uh, any time. Uh, and... Uh, uh, the, the, this, this vulnerability of the IDPs or this more prevalent vulnerability is due to the fact that it's been very complicated for people who uh, did not have um, economic uh, means to cross the border to neighboring countries. Um, the situation of Iraq and neighboring countries is markedly different from the one of Afghanistan and neighboring countries in the sense that we're not talking about, you know, the same type of third world countries. I mean, Iraq used to be a pretty developed country, which was de-developed uh, during the Iran-Iraq war first and then during uh, the sanction years in the 1990s and even more after the American invasion in 2003 with uh, a marked retreat of the capacity of the state to provide uh, for social services, maintain infrastructures and the like. But it's first and foremost, uh, foremost an oil producing country and it was also centralized uh, uh, economy, uh, which was redistributing services to the population. So uh, we're not talking about uh, uh, um, a level of development comparable to the one of Afghanistan at all. When we're looking at neighboring countries, and I'm uh, only looking at the uh, post-2003 uh, refugee crisis, we're looking at Syria and Jordan, which are also middle-income countries, uh, with a very good level of uh, public service and infrastructure, with uh, governments uh, which um, function uh, and uh, which uh, are used to um, also opening their public services to uh, waves of migrants from other Arab countries. And this is the way they have considered the Iraqis. None of the Arab countries in the vicinity of Iraq uh, has an asylum system, unlike what is the case with Iran or Af Af uh, Pakistan in a different way. Uh, they don't have asylum systems, they are not signatory to uh, international conventions on refugees, and they've been very much criticized and castigated by the uh, international humanitarian community, especially NGOs, uh, for uh, resisting uh, any uh, incitement and, and pressure to uh, even think about uh, signing, uh, in particular the 1951 convention, Geneva Convention on Refugees. Nevertheless, uh, they've been extremely generous to Iraqi refugees, uh, which they have welcomed, not within a refugee regime, but within an Arab migration regime. Um,